through a number of people in a reasonable time. And the only other thing I'd say is, um, I know that you may have strong feelings about the proposal and about the other, but it's not helpful to the inquiry if you express uh, views about the appellant which you may find difficult to substantiate. It, it, it's simply not really for me to consider. I'm here to consider the planning merits uh, or otherwise the proposal and make recommendations on those. So if you can bear that in mind, and I'll just remind you that the, um, the inquiry is being screened as well. So anything you say um, will be out there in the ether somewhere that uh, somebody will be able to watch. Okay. <coughs> well, with that brief introduction, one or two people have said they'd like to speak early so they can get away to other commitments. And the first uh, who's indicated to me is uh, Councillor John Cooper, please. <coughs> Morning, Councillor Cooper. <laughs> Good morning. Well, as Mr. Richards mentioned, I am uh, Councillor Jonathan Coop, and I am Trafford Council's uh, Executive Member for Safe Strong Communities. Safe Strong Communities it has sort of a ring about it. I have been a Trafford Councillor since 1999, and in that time, I have received many um, uh, applications from members of the public about objections to planning applications within the borough. But I must say I have actually lost count of the number that I have received over this application. It's my personal opinion that this is the wrong facility in the wrong place. Experienced traffic councillors who are democratically elected by the public turn down this application and I'm very, very sorry to see that Real Energy didn't accept that decision. I took the opportunity of looking at the Council's uh, core strategy, their development plan for, the, for this area uh, that we're discussing. It's actually referred to as the, uh, the Trafford Centre Rectangle. And under the heading Development Requirements at uh, Section 8.7, it says the location of specific uses within this location will need to have a regard to the air quality management area. Currently, some of the poorest air quality in Trafford is in this location, adjacent to Barton Bridge and the Trafford Centre. So, even though we have some of the poorest air quality in this area, Peel Energy has applied for a reduced height chimney stack compared to similar plants that we see around the country. And this, I believe, is because of the close proximity to Barton Aerodrome, which, of course, as we know, is uh, also owned by the Peel Group. Yet, we have in the same area the Salford City Reds Rugby League Stadium, complete with its uh, floodlights. And when I did speak to a gentleman uh, from the EA, uh, Environment Agency, I, he, I said I was concerned about this and he said he was also extremely concerned about it because it wasn't on the horizon when the license was first considered. But I, I did ask for a report on this and sadly I'm, I'm still waiting. But due to the chimney stack restriction, the incinerator will not be dispersing the particles it incinerates effectively. As it, as it should have been, in an area that we already know has been identified as one of the poorest air quality areas in Trafford. We know the plant has identified its intentions to incinerate waste wood, which is known to incorporate such contaminants as uh, heavy metals, arsenic, uh, lead, copper, and Peel Energy has also applied, I believe, for permission to burn uh, refuse derived fuel which uh, in reality includes substances such, such as waste plastics, which could produce dioxins, which of course can be seriously toxic, moreover exceptionally hazardous to human health. The Health Protection Agency have raised concerns about contaminants entering the food chain. This I am led to believe has raised concerns about eating locally produced fruit and vegetables, and this area, of course, as we know, is uh, a very high population area. 
Uh, I'm sure it's already been said, but eight schools, sports facilities, and of course, our homes. I'm also concerned that we will not be in a position to attract new businesses into the area. Companies will be deterred due to the impacts of a scheme uh, such as this. So I fear that the growth will be affected. With all the implications for jobs and prosperity in our community, well, this is an area that I do have a concern. This plant will take emission levels to their ceiling. No other businesses could emit anything without exceeding the limit. Many learned people have registered concerns if this incinerator goes ahead, and Urmston is on its way back up after years of struggle. If this incinerator does go ahead, I feel that it will set back all the good work that has gone on in the Urmston area. This, it's, it's not, a in, not in my backyard. I honestly believe that this is just in the wrong place. Democratically elected councillors refused planning permission for this incinerator after listening to all the evidence that was put before them. I just wish that Peel would accept that decision. We want them to be a good neighbour. Peel do good things. We want them to be a good neighbour. But we don't want Peel to be, we should, I should say, we want Peel to be at, the, at the, the heart of our community. We love it here. We want to enjoy our life here. People <coughs> should, Peel, I beg your pardon, should be the heart of our community. They shouldn't take the heart from our community. People in this room have put their lives on hold when people applied Peel applied for planning permission for this incinerator. I just wish that Peel would let them have their lives back. And I include myself in that as a local resident. I hope Peel will withdraw. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Thank you. I should have offered uh, Mr. Kingston the opportunity to ask questions. He, he happens to be in fact to his objection in his public session, but I do need to offer him the opportunity. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you, Captain. Mr. Richards. <coughs> okay, well, we had a number of themes emerged there, and Captain Cook spoke very eloquently about the chimney staff ice, and I've heard a lot about that from other, other um, people who made representation. The air quality management area and the ceiling and about regeneration of the area. And I appreciate that these may all be views that you feel strongly about as well. Um, but I am aware of them, uh, and it's not necessary to repeat um, them. Okay, so the next speaker is um, Councillor Brian Shaw, please. <coughs> and thank you for giving me this opportunity to put my views across. I'm here this morning not as an elected member um, for Trafford Council. I'm actually here as a resident of Urmston, a father and a grandfather of children and grandchildren who are residents of Urmston. I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit emotional. I do, I do apologise for that. And I, 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 will, I don't want to repeat what's already been, been said, but I feel there's some points that we really do have to look at, and we have to look at in detail. The public opinion of this application, I've never seen anything as strong, and it's real concern and it's real fear of people. We're concerned about our children and our grandchildren's safety and well-being for the future. And when we talk about things that I've heard about this, this site or this location is not residential because of the distance from it, well, I understand that, but the wind does not respect distance or direction. We're going to have particles that are going to be passing over our local schools for which there are eight local schools in that vicinity, as well as four nurseries. The, this decision, if the decision goes forward to accept this appeal, it, it's going to have a huge, huge impact 
on, on our future and the future of our children and grandchildren. I would just ask you, Mr. Richard, on a personal basis, that you reach the right decision. And I ask that question of my children and grandchildren. And I, I, I understand feelings of people. I don't, I have to be honest, understand the technical bits that people have said. I've heard the term saying it's a, an acceptable risk level. And I understand that, that we, we can't avoid things because there's a risk. But they say with regards to risk that the proof is in the pudding. Well, that's, <coughs> this is a pudding I don't want my children or grandchildren to have to eat. So I'll just ask again, if I beg you to read the right decision. Thank you. Thank you. and resident in this area since 74. Like everyone here, I have great concerns about the proposed incinerator. <coughs> I've been doing some research and a lot of reading. First of all, I'd like to make a quote from the Met Office Research Plans for 2012-13. First quote is, the Environmental Audit Committee states that air quality is linked to 50,000 premature deaths each year in the UK. Secondly, a quotation, the need for further work to quantify the effects of air pollution in respect of a phenomenon which is called a temperature inversion layer is needed in order to be able to advise potential constructors where and where not temperature inversion layers are prone to occur. I'm not sure whether the inversion layer phenomenon has already been mentioned, but I feel that I would like to explain what this is. Essentially, Manchester invented pollution in the 1850s when the spinning jennies were used to process cotton and every street corner had a chimney belching out smoke. If you go to the Manchester City Art Gallery and look at the pictures of L.S. Lowry, you will see these images. Things have changed over time, and now we don't have the visible pollution of coal smoke, but it's been replaced by the almost invisible, but more inimical emissions from the type of incinerator we're discussing here today. Just to quickly explain what an inversion layer is, it's a phenomenon whereby the normally warm air at the surface and the cooler air above become inverted, i.e. we get cold air at the surface and warmer air above. Manchester is particularly prone to the formation of the inversion layer because it has the qualifications, i.e. it has mountains to the north, east and south, the Pennines, and is open to the warm, wet westerlies from the Atlantic. What happens is that the warm air at the surface is replaced when there's an anticyclone to the north, east and south. The cold air slides down the Pennines and pushes the warm air upwards because cold air is more dense. So we have warm air up and cold air down. Now in relation to the chimney stack, which is emitting gases and pollutants at quite a velocity, under normal conditions, 
the hot air rises through the lower warm air and then hits the cold air and then whizzes off to be spread over a very wide area. However, under inversion layer conditions, we have cold air at the bottom now, remember. The hot air from the stack rises rapidly to the cold air, but cools as it goes up. And by the time it reaches the warm air, which is not normally there, it cannot go any further, because warm air cannot go up through warm air. So what does it do? It spreads out laterally and forms what used to be called a smog. It cannot go upwards, so it goes sideways. And indeed, particulate matters begin to fall back to Earth. So what will happen here is that the <coughs> concentration of pollutants per cubic meter, which are given to us by various, various authorities, would become greatly concentrated, as you can imagine. It's rather like putting the lid on a steaming pan of boiling water. The steam can't get out. It just falls back into the water again. This is a very, very real problem and I can't find any reference to it in any of the information from the Environmental Authority or the Health Protection Agency. And if that is the case, if there is nothing within those documents and from, from those two agencies, then I feel that this has been extremely negligent on their behalf. The citizens of Geneva, Los Angeles, in particular Los Angeles, We've all heard of the, the smog and pollution there. And even Mumbai suffer from these conditions whereby the emissions from the hot, from the stacks, are <coughs> almost recycled under these inversion layer phenomena. The inversion layers occur in Manchester, as I've said, because of the peculiar topographical situation its peculiar topographical situation and occur with some frequency and they can last for days and sometimes weeks and during those periods of time the concentration of pollutants can rise inexorably to dangerous levels. The effect of this is that the population in the area over a 12 month period will be subjected to levels on an average basis which are extremely dangerous. I'll be grateful if the committee could consider the issue of the inversion layers because of its great importance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Butler. Um, okay, we'll move on then. Uh, Mr. Robert Thomas Carter, please. Hello. Um, good morning. Uh, my name is Bob Thomas Carter. I'm an unusual representative of this kind of thing. I speak as an individual, as a trader in Anderson and as the chairman of the Emerson Town Centre Partnership. Um, we normally aren't an environmental group. We are basically a group of small businessmen, small traders, and uh, our normal business is making a living and you know, contributing to the, you know, the you know, Emerson environment, not the Emerson environment, the Emerson uh, population. Um, we're generally a forward-looking group. We're very generally an enterprising group. We're generally you know, very interested in, in moving forward and you know, having you know, wealth and happiness in, in our surrounding area. The reason I'm here today is quite unusually there was an almost unanimous view within our membership and they are reflecting the unanimous view of just about everybody they know 
and I've never seen this with a single issue within Urmston, that everybody is on the same side. There's normally two sides. This is not the case. We've brought up a number of meetings and I've never heard a voice for this incinerator, which is why uniquely I'm, I'm here you know, as a member of a trading group, because I really couldn't get out of it. <laughs> um, I mean, just to give a bit of a background as to what our, or my personal and, and our objection would be, is over recent times we have developed our cities. Our cities is, is where most of us live, although 90% of the country is countryside, 10% of it's cities, most people live in cities. And in the UK, we are building post-industrial cities, and they're great, and they're moving forward, and we're, we're feeling we're putting an awful lot of energy into this, particularly people like our membership, the Urban and Partners membership, are building a great town, a great city. It's not the dark satanic mills of the past. It's a place you can live, it's a place you can play, it's a place you can raise your children, and it's, you know, it's a really positive, upward-moving environment. It's quite dispiriting that you have this upward, you know, positive, upward-moving environment, and somebody basically drops something on your lap that nobody really likes. And ultimately, regardless of how much science, we know that burning rubbish near our children is a bad thing. There's no way of looking at that. It might not be a very bad thing, but it's definitely a bad thing. To be honest, I think it's a fairly bad thing. Um, and you can describe it as negligible or nearly nothing, but there's, there's always going to be an effect. And it, it does detract from the area. It's not helping. It doesn't need to be here. We don't need more power stations. As we become green and going forward, the requirement for energy is going to decrease over the next 20, 30 years. It may not be decreasing now, but at least prices, they're only going to go up. You know, we're traders, we know what happens when prices go up. Demand will go down. It's, it will happen. There will be less demand for energy. So why are we building more power stations? It just doesn't make sense to us as traders. We don't need it. It just needs to be here. And then one the final really quick point is if you are in business, if you are a trader, if you are in a community, one of the really good things that allows your business to move forward is if people are smiling, if they feel empowered, if they feel in control of their own lives, and that becomes self-perpetuating. If people stop feeling empowered, if they stop smiling, if they start feeling put upon, then you create a sort of vicious circle, and that can change the direction of the community. And we, you know, we've had a few rough years. We, we like to be coming out of it. It's, a, it's an unusual viewpoint, right? Yeah, you know, well, you know, we are a nation of shopkeepers, so we're, <laughs> we're a good representative voice. Well, thank you very much for bringing it to us. Cheerio. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Um, it feels like therapy to me because I'm so annoyed about this issue. So I'll try and press a some what I've got here because it bring quite a bit. But <clears throat> we start it like this. Peel Energy says that the BREP will be burning waste wood. And when I discovered there was something nasty in the wood, I got concerned and began to find out more about the incinerators and the BREP. <coughs> And Peel Energy are not the only group who are involved in uh, incinerators. They all seem to go to appeals like this. And I think that ostensibly to uh, reach the government targets and that, but I think more to, than that are the subsidies that are given to the recycling energy. So I think that's a big factor in why these are pursued to, to the nth appeal. I've got a concern about the Environment Agency as well. On its website, it says, our principal aims are to protect and improve the environment. Well, how can an incinerator bar possibly improve the environment? It also says, businesses are feeling the pressure of the global economic downturn, and we continue to seek ways to make it less burdensome for them to comply with regulations. And how do they do that? Well, it's known that the Environment Agency so far not refused any environment permit incinerator. And when I attended the, um, the <coughs> soccer dome, I got the impression they were just concerned about the incinerator and not about the environment. There was one case where I saw that the environment agents had been um, 
defeated, you might say, and that was by Peel Holdings of Salford on the issue of sluice gates. And they won a High Court appeal against the Environment Agency there. And they include this to illustrate that the Peel Group does not always accept the authority and decisions of the EA. And it is trusted to do their task, and it only agrees with it when it suits their case. More particularly the BREP. Why is Peel Energy so insistent that an incinerator should be built at Barton? On their website it says, Peel Energy has identified a number of sites which provide the potential to accommodate new biomass fuel energy plants, a renewable and green form of energy generation. The proposed development at Barton will enable Peel to add to its portfolio of renewable energy facilities. And some more then. Therefore, Barton is just one of a number of potential sites. It isn't an ideal site because it is in a res residential area. It's close to visit attractions. It's had its design compromised by having a short chimney stack. And the air quality in parts of the area is already in excess of European standards. Why not put it on another potential site? The building itself is a concern. We're told that it will generate 20 megawatts. Well, to give us an idea what that means, we're told that it could supply 37,000 homes. More specifically, more than one third of the homes at Trafford. <coughs> Compare that with the brief information we're given on the size of the building. We're given only two measurements, that it will be 40 metres high and a chimney stack up to 45 metres. And from the artist's impressions, we get no real idea of the size of the building and what to compare it with. It has been worked out that it's nearly as high as a chill factor and will be 10 metres higher than a nearby motor, motorway high-level bridge, which is 30 metres high. One estimate is it could be as big as Wembley Stadium. Emissions in general are a concern. Cigarette smoke has become restricted because of the passive effects of the smoke and car owners are penalised by their road tax for their car emissions. This is in recognition that these emissions are hazards to health. So it's not surprised that people are concerned about emissions from the proposed incinerator. I'm not an expert on emissions from incinerators, but despite being told by certain bodies that they are safe and not a threat to health, I'm not convinced. There are experts for and against the emissions from incinerators. Maybe worth pointing out that Experts were brought in by tobacco and cigarette companies to prove that smoking cigarettes was not harmful. Look at where we are now with smoking and its passive effects. Companies bring in experts to defend their businesses, to counteract the experts who question health dangers. One group of experts defends wealth and the other health. Where there is a difference of opinion between the experts, I would go for those on the health side. I've lived in Daisy Mary for nearly 50 years and I've experienced obnoxious smells from the wastewater treatment works. There's an occasional smell now. You didn't have to live near the works to detect the smells. They seem to spread over a large area. Although you couldn't see anything, there's obviously something there. Whereas hazardous particulate emissions from the proposed incinerator would not be seen or detected without special equipment. It's the invisibility of the harmful particles that is a concern. And I've yet to see a fallout <coughs> map of the emissions. Extra vehicles and exhaust fumes. It's a steady stream of HGVs required to supply fuel and also remove ash. And traffic in the area is bad enough now. We don't need more HGVs and exhaust fumes. To answer the traffic problem, there are more peel projects in the area. A superstore near the retail park, not far from the BREP site. Also, I read into a local paper today, just this week, that Trafford Centre Mark II is being planned, as you can see. Is it required? The BREP is a want by Peel Energy and not a need. The council did not ask for an incinerator and is unanimously against it. It's no benefit, nor is it essential to the area. After all, the electricity generated by the incinerator would not be supplied locally, but to the national grid. At Carrington, a power station to be built. And the upgrade at the existing Davium wastewater treatment works 
will generate enough biogas to generate electricity for running the new treatment process and for exporting the surplus to the national grid. A huge incinerator is not required in the area. And localism. People have spoken to locally are against incinerator, but cynically feel that peel energy will get its way. They feel as though there's nothing they can do against the power and money of companies such as Peel Energy. And where does the localism bill, bill fit into this? It says, this bill will shift power from central government back into the hands of individuals, communities and councils. This government trusts people to take charge of their lives and we will push power downwards and outwards to the lowest possible level, including individuals, neighbourhoods, professionals and communities as well as all local councils and other local institutions. I'm beginning to sympathise with my namesake, Citizen Smith, who is all for power to the people, not power to the big companies. I think our democratically elected council knows more about our area than the two energy executives. I hope the spirit of the localism bill prevails in your decision, sir. On the Peel Energy website, we read, from the inception of a project through to decommissioning, <coughs> Peel Energy seeks to minimise the impact on and build a positive relationship with those in the vicinity of an energy project. I have not detected any positive relationship by Peel Energy with this community. At the planning meeting last November, Peel Energy must have sensed the overwhelming 